What's up guys, I'm Darkjack, and today I'm going to share with you my expectations about Halo 4, which comes out tomorrow. Concerning the single player, I expect the single player campaign to be by far the best in the Halo franchise. I've really enjoyed the single player campaigns of the previous games, especially Halo Reach's campaign, even though I found the multiplayer to be disappointing. Graphically, the game looks amazing. I've watched all the video on YouTube that I can of the multiplayer and single player. The game looks fantastic, the controls look smooth, and it looks beautiful. I'm surprised the Xbox 360 has the graphical power to produce such a game. But the single player campaign is only going to have eight missions in it. There'll be eight single player missions, but each mission is going to be long. So hopefully they won't be as long as the assault on the control room from the first Halo game, but you're going to get your money's worth as far as the single player goes. And it's going to be fun to fight against all the new enemies and to play against the Didact, who's the leader of the Forerunners, and his Promethean Knights. I'm looking forward to beating the game on Legendary because I've beaten every Halo game on Legendary, which is the hardest difficulty up until this point, and so Halo 4 will, will be no different. And I've also beaten all the Call of Duty games on so the hardest difficulty as well. And Spartan Ops looks great. I'm really looking forward to doing Spartan Ops, even though the title is a ripoff of Spec Ops from Modern Warfare 3. And 343 Industries has said that the first season of content for Spartan Ops is going to be longer than the camp campaign for Halo 3 ODST. So I'm really looking forward to that. And you're going to be able to rank up in, combat in, in uh, Spartan Ops. I almost said combat training. Because in Spartan Ops, you can use that to rank up. That way you can, you, you can do that to get your stuff so you can unlock the BR and everything else before you get into multiplayer. So as far as the single player goes, I don't have any worries about that. The single player looks great, as well as the co-op of Spartan Ops. But when we get to multiplayer, that does worry me a great deal. I am worried that the multiplayer for Halo 4 is going to be too much like Halo Reach and not enough like Halo 3. Because 343 Industries is codding out the Halo franchise. They're looking at what Call of Duty does and they're trying to imitate it. They're making Halo 4's multiplayer an arcade first person shooter instead of a modified arena shooter. And what Microsoft and 343 are trying to do is they're trying to bring back all the players that left Halo Reach to go play Black Ops. And we can see evidence of this in Spartan Ops, which is a ripoff of Spec Ops. You've got joining games in progress, which is both a good and bad thing because you're going to have to join games in progress where it puts you on the losing team, and then you get stomped when it's not your fault. But at the same time, it's going to allow games to fill up, so it's going to be good for people that play with full parties, but not for people who play individually. You've got to unlock your wep weapons and perks as you go along, like Call of Duty. So it's not like everyone's going to have the same starting weapons. Instead, you get to choose your weapon, which is a good thing because you no longer have to worry about AR starts. You can now start with the BR every game. But you have to unlock it. You have to work for it. So it's going to put people who are new, new at the game at a disadvantage of the people who have been playing for a long time. As well as the people who have the Legendary Edition. Because they're going to be able to have those uh, some of the support upgrades before the people get them. And then there are loadouts. You get to customize your loadout. And you get to have five loadouts that you unlock over time. You've got a three perk system of armor abilities, the tactical package, and the support upgrade. That's your tier one, two, and three perks. Then you've got kill streaks in the form of ordnance drops. You get a certain number of kills, then you get to call down a care package of sorts. And you, there's even a support upgrade that allows you to change your ordnance drop if you want, like Hardline Pro. You've got the removal of the starting weapons, or starting power weapons. So instead, power weapons will fall randomly from the sky at different locations. And there's a support upgrade you can use that will show you the location before other players can see them. Which I think is going to be really overpowered. So power weapons fall randomly from the sky instead of controlling them uh, by understanding the timing of power ups and power weapons. And I think some of the abilities in the multiplayer are really overpowered. You've got the regeneration field which is like regen. So I think that's going to be pretty annoying to deal with because you'll be in a gunfight with people and then your opponent will throw down a regen field right before you can kill them and then you die. So it's like the regen in Halo 3, but you start out with it instead of having to, to pick it up and control it. Then you've got Promethean Vision, which is the ability to, ability to see through walls, which I think is going to be really overpowered. You've got the active camo returning from Halo Reach, and there's the jetpack, which I can't use because I play on Bumper Jumper, so 
I can't use the jetpack and aim at the same time. Then there's uh, an ability called Nemesis. And what that is is that when you kill someone, if the person has Nemesis on, they can see exactly where you are when they respawn. So that could be a really difficult thing to deal with. So I think what 343 Industries is trying to do is they're trying to make the game as accessible as possible to new players. They want to lower the skill gap as much as possible by removing the starting power weapon so people won't have to memorize the places of the weapons and power-ups. And then having ordnance drops and then random power, power weapon drops. And so hopefully the multiplayer is not reached 2.0, but it's its own game that borrows from the best elements of all the previous Halo games. But I'm going to give the multiplayer a fair shot to impress me. I'm not just going to discard it, because I think it's not going to work out. I'm going to spend a lot of time trying to perfect it, and I'm going to be making lots of videos for you guys, trying to find the best strategies. So my advice to you guys is don't get, get your expectations too high. Don't get your hopes up, and then have the game disappoint you. Instead, approach the game just like any other video game. Even though it has Halo in the title, it has to be judged on its own merits. So don't get your expectations up. Just approach it like any other video game, and try to treat it as a new game. Don't rely upon your knowledge of previous games to try to get an advantage in this game. You have to treat it as a whole new game, and you have to start from scratch to learn the maps and all the weapons. So I'm going to play it as much as I can, and then when Black Ops 2 comes out the week after that, I'm going to be posting that a whole lot more. So stay tuned, and I'll have more Halo videos for you guys in the future. See you later.